I'm walking out into Dublin's hell along the back of Christ Church. Christ Church Yard, and in front of Christ Church Yard, stretching right around to here, was an area in Dublin called Hell. Now, there's all sorts of stories how it got its name, but there's two good stories. One is in connection with the old four courts. Before the courts moved across the river to the other side, they were right beside Christ Church. In fact, the people who owned the dwellings in Hell used to advertise and say, apartments to let in Hell, very suitable for judges and barristers. I suppose it got its name Hell by all the heavy sentences and the poor devils that were taken from here up to Gallows Cross at Bagot Street to be hanged. There was another story in connection with St. Michael's Church. It would appear that there were two statues outside the church. The statue of St. Michael the Archangel and the statue of El Nick the Devil. And at the suppression of the monasteries when the Reformation came in, all the relics were burned on Christ Church Hill, including the statue of St. Michael. But they didn't bother burning the statue of the Devil. And the Devil was left in Dublin's hell. The Trinity College students were informed when they came in to enrol for their term that Dublin's hell was out of bounds. And this is where Dublin's hell was. Of course, Christ Church Place in those years was Skinner's Row. And of course, the corporation met there, the Alderman of Skinner's Row, before they took over the Royal Exchange as the City Hall. Well, there's the sign for St. Patrick's. But where's the other signs for all the other saints who had churches around here, and some of them still standing? St. Martin, St. Bridget, St. Mocktail, St. Werber. St. Maria del Dam, St. Andrew. St. John the Evangelist, St. Olaf the Norwegian King, St. Dulok, who was there in his church before going out to die in Kinsidi. St. Nicholas within, and St. Nicholas of Myra without. St. Michael, St. Colum Kill, St. Ardian, and St. Lagans O'Toole, the Cathedral of the Most Holy Trinity, commonly known as Christ Church. All the same now, is in Dublin a sanctified old spot, when you think of it? <laughs> Dublin artists, in a way, owe a debt to two men for having Christ Church Cathedral today. Mr. Rowe, the distiller, who put up the money for the restoration of Christ Church about 100 years ago. And George Edmund Street, the architect who redesigned the cathedral exactly as Lawrence O'Toole and Strongwell planned it. I love this old spot in Dublin. Some people have to go halfway around the ward to relax, but I can relax walking down under the arch by a Christchurch cathedral. Of course, the cathedral was founded by the Vikings in 1038, designed by St. Lydon's O'Toole and Strongbow. So Strongbow's tomb is in there, and Lydon's O'Toole's heart in an iron casket, and the say St. Patrick said mass in the vaults. Do you remember the film, The Blue Max? The German officers came out of their headquarters in Berlin, got into their motor car, and were driving through the streets of Berlin. And next, the car takes a turn, up along Royan Taverton Street, under the arch of Christchurch. And everybody in the picture house shouting, that's not Berlin, mister, that's Christchurch. Here we are in St. Michael's Lane, looking up at the old tower, that 17th century tower of St. Michael's. It's now the Senate Hall. But when they were building the Senate Hall, they decided to include the tower of St. Michael's Church.
Barnwell's slogan was, we sold the living, not the dead, with the doctors of the leather and thread. Thomas Henry Barnwell. old days street of the coops. It gets its name from the time all the trade guilds had their own street, the shoemakers, the tanners, the couriers. Cook Street was famous. It was the hub of the printing industry. Here the first book in Irish was printed at the top of the street, they say in 1571. It was also a great street for coffin makers. At one time there were 25 undertakers in Dublin and 19 of them lived in this street. To say it was the only place in Dublin you can buy a second-hand coffin. But that didn't mean it was down and back up again. That meant it was shop styled I doubt if there's a street in the world that sent up more masses, benedictions, hymns, stations of the cross, prayers and rosaries to heaven than this street of the Kooks. And to prove that point, at the end of the street, was the Jesuit community in Rosemary Lane Chapel. Here at my back, the great Friar Franciscans. Over on my right, the Poor Clare Convent. Beyond them, the Barefooted Carmelites. The far side of the road, the Franciscan Capuchins. And beyond them, the Blackfriar Dominicans. And at the top of the hill, the Augustinian nuns and the Augustinian hermits. Jesuits, Franciscans, poor Clares, Carmelites, Capuchins, Dominicans and Augustinians and two parish churches, the Church of St. Audian and the Church of St. Catherine. <laughs> When you heard the book Whaley playing handball against the walls of Jerusalem, how about these chiselers playing hurling against the walls of Dublin? I'm sitting outside St. Audien's Arch, the only remaining gateway in the old walls of the city of Dublin. And I'm reading a copy of the Freeman's Journal. And so why wouldn't I? For wasn't the Freeman's Journal born here? Just over the archway, the first copy came off the printing press in 1763. I'm walking in the footprints of kings, princes, and bishops. In the footsteps of El Strongbow, and King Rory O'Connor, St. Lawrence O'Toole, and in the footprints of St. Columkill. Because this was St. Columkill's church in Dublin in the year 650. These stones here, this one and this one here, are probably old stones from Columkill's foundation. They say that the altar of St. Audience Church is in the exact same place as it was in the year 650. There's a sort of a medieval sensation atmosphere about this place. Even though the hustle and the bustle and the traffic is just around the corner. Do you remember when you were kids out with your mother of a Sunday? You'd love walking on the walls, holding your mummy's hand. And the corporation did a great job in this place. But I'd like to see a monument in this park. A monument to a man by the name of Sir James Lowther. Now, it was in the year 1783. You see, Grattan's Parliament and Grattan's Free Trade meant nothing to the poor of Dublin. They were dying from the cold. And your man James Lowther went over to Whitehaven 
and bought 2,000 ton of coal and it's distributed all around the poor of Dublin. The parish of St. Audien's got 60 tons, St. Micken's got 250 ton, and all the poor up in St. Catherine's 350 ton. Now I'd like to see a monument here, maybe a sculptor, a dual monument, in the shape of a fireplace or a mantelpiece. And on top of the mantelpiece, a little bust with the head of Sir James Lowther, who gave the poor of Dublin 2,000 ton of coal in the year 1783. St. Audience, Napper Tandy, the Winstanley Memorial Hall, the Corn Market. This place is really steeped in history. High Street, where Wolf Town was waked. And at one time, High Street was the dividing line in the two parts of Ireland. Lat Khan and Lat Moa. When the two kings decided to divide Ireland up into High Street was the line right out to the Atlantic Ocean, down to the west. How are you guys? That's a nice gateway. And we look out through the gateway at where Wormwood Gate once stood. To say at Wormwood Gate, Oliver Bond's wife used to recruit the United Irishmen. There was a letter in Major Soar's papers. Dear Major, go to the Wormwood Gate tonight. At nine o'clock, you'll see a lady dressed in black, carrying a black lace bag. Don't be alarmed or dismayed, but in the bag is a Bible. Persuading in the United Irishman above Oliver Bond's house at the Wormwood Gate. Yes, St. Audience is steeped in history. Of course, above the steps in Newgate Jail, the prisoners begged for arms through the bars of the prison because prisoners weren't fed in those years. That led rise to the founding of the South Dublin Union Workhouse in James Street and the North Dublin Union across the far side of the city where vagabonds and petty thieves were thrown and did a day's work and fed and probably died there. St. Audience is resting on the old church of Column Kill in Dublin, going back to the 6th century. St. Audience, of course, is Anglo-Norman. He was a bishop of Rome. He had a nickname. He used to call him Daddy-O. You haven't heard of the Daddy Doyle. Well, here we have the Daddy Audien. Audience is the oldest parish in Dublin. Its bells go back to 1423, and inside the door there, there's a lucky stone of what was called